Greetings friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sashavelis. This is the Bible News Prophecy Program. In its latest public letter, Greg Williams, president of Grace Communion International, the current name of the Protestant group that took over and changed the old Worldwide Church of God, had the following. That was written in July 20th, uh, 2002 uh, of this current year. During Easter season, we studied John 17 and explored the prayer of Jesus that he prayed for the disciples and us. How amazing for Jesus to include and believe all believers in his prayer, and even more amazing to include us in his life and love. The essence of the prayer is that all of them may be one Father, just as you and I are in me, and I am in you. Paul says this, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. The oneness, the unity that Jesus prayed for, us is produced through the presence and power of the Spirit. It is a gift for us to receive and then for us to pass along. Well, Grace Communion International, dear friends, that was their, that was the quote from that latest president, uh, from latest letter that their president read, has written. Well, Grace Communion International indeed has a false and unbiblical vision of Christian unity. By discussing Easter in this context, Greg Williams reminded me and reminded all of us that the one of the reasons the world celebrates Easter, which was supposed to be Passover, on a Sunday as a Christian, so-called Christian holiday, is because the sun-worshipping Emperor Constantine wanted his version of unity, under quotation mark, above the Bible. Passover was always kept on the 14th of Nisan by those who claimed to be faithful to the practices of the Apostle John and the Bible. But since many compromised and wanted to keep it on a Sunday, there were two different dates the professing world was keeping Passover in the 4th century. Emperor Constantine did not like that at all, and he convened the famous Council of Nicaea in, three, uh, in 325 AD to decide on a universal date. So the emperor convened the Council of, 300, of 318 bishops in the city of Nicaea. They passed certain ecclesiastical canons at the councils besides, and at the same time decreed in regard to the Passover that there must be one unanimous concord on the celebration of God's holy and supremely excellent day, for it was variously observed by people. Epiphanes, this is his uh, writings, and this was the Panarion of Epiphanes of Salam, Salamis, book, chap, uh, book number two and number three, sections 47 through 80, etc. So this was published in New York in 1994 and pages 471 and 472. A Sunday, this article also says, a Sunday date was selected instead of Nisan 14th, which can fall on any day of the week. Now notice what Constantine declared about this. Constantine, who is supposedly the first Roman emperor, but he is actually... Uh, he, ha he was a pagan until the end of his life. And I'm quoting now from Theodoret of Cyrus, Ecclesiastical History, Book 1, Chapter 9. And this is excerpted from Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers, Second Series, Volume 3, edited by Philip Schaff and Henry Weiss, American Edition, 1892. And this is online edition copyright, 2005 by K. Knight. So, here is what Constantine actually declared about this. The commemoration of the most sacred Paschal Feast being then debated, it was unanimously decided that it would be well that it should be everywhere celebrated upon the same day. What can be more fair or more seemingly or seemly than that, that the festival by which we have received all the hope of immortality should be carefully celebrated by all on playing grounds with the same order and exactitude? It was in the first place declared improper to follow the custom of the Jews in the celebration of this holy festival, because their hands having been stained with crime, the minds of these wretched men are necessarily blinded. By rejecting their custom, we established and hand down to succeeding ages one which is more reasonable and which has been observed ever since the day of our Lord's suffering. suffering. Let us then have nothing in common with the Jews who are our adversaries, for we have received from our Savior another way. Actually, Friends around the world, the Savior observed Passover on the 14th of Nisan. It is those who reject the ways of our Savior, who accept the decision of the Roman Emperor over the Bible, who do not observe it then. Meaning that they actually follow the Roman Emperor and not the Bible. Now, uh, 
uh, noticed that the first consideration was to not follow the Jews and they were the ones who followed the Bible in this instance. So the ordinance of the Passover was followed very carefully and exactly that, and that's what the Jews did in the past. Second, Constantine claimed that people always accepted his Sunday date, but there is absolutely no evidence of this Sunday Passover was something that second century Romans implemented. There is no proof whatsoever that any observed it on Sunday prior to death, Thus, Constantine's second reason is also in error. According to Eusebius, and he was the Constantine's autobiographer, so according to his uh, book, Life of Constantine, book 3, chapter 18, a more accurate translation of that last line above from the Roman Emperor Constantine should be, let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Savior a different way. Now, I do not recall Jesus indicated that Jews were detestable. He himself was a Jew. Nor do I recall that he ever changed the date of Passover. But apparently, Constantine felt otherwise. So, of course, he, he felt otherwise and he was led by another spirit. So, the Sunday observance is now known as Easter. And instead of biblical unity... Constantinian unity is what Grace Communion International and others seem to want. Now, the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches, uh, this is quote from Catechism of the Catholic Church, in premature protest, Joseph Kader Ratzinger, Doubleday, New York, 1995, page 332. So, the Catechism, 1170, at the Council of Nicaea in 325, all the churches agreed that Easter... The Christian Passover should be celebrated on the Sunday following the first full moon, 14th Nisan, after the vernal equinox. But the idea that all the churches agreed is not true as the bishops from the faithful churches did not attend that council. Notice what the Roman Catholic priest and historian Bellarmino Bagatti wrote. Here is the quote from his work. And uh, it is quoted in, of course, translated by Eugene Hoad, Bagatti Bellarmino, the church from the Gentiles in Palestine. And this was published in uh, 1971, Franciscan Printing Press, Jerusalem, pages 47 and 48. So, Bellarmino, Bagatti, this is what he writes. The inhabitants of Syria, of Kilikia, and of Mesopotamia were still celebrating Easter, that is Passover, with the Jews. The importance of the matters to be discussed and the great division that existed had led Constantine to bring together a big number of bishops, including confessors of the faith, in order to give the impression that the whole of Christendom was represented. In fact, the churches of Jewish stock had had no representation. From this, we can conclude that no Judeo-Christian bishop participated in the council. Either they were not invited or they declined to attend. And so the capitulars had a free hand to establish norms for certain practices without meeting opposition or hearing other viewpoints. Once the road was open, future councils would continue on these lines, thus deepening the breach between the Christians of two stocks. The point of view of the Judeo-Christians, devoid of Greek philosophical formation, was that of keeping steadfast to the testimonia and therefore not to admit any word foreign to the Bible, including homoousian. That was the quote from Bagatti, Bellarmino Bagatti. So not every church was represented, nor did everyone accept the decree of the sun-worshipping emperor as the Roman Catholic supporting Epiphanes noted a few decades after the council, this is now from his, uh, quote from his uh, work, uh, the, the, the Panarion of Epiphanes of Salamis, and this was translated by Frank Williams, published in New York, 1994, pages 23 to 25. Quote, the quattro decimans contentiously keep Passover on one day, once per year. They keep the Passover on whichever day the 14th of the month falls. Christ had to be slain on the 14th of the month in accordance with the law. End of the quote. Now, Quattro Decimans only kept Passover once per year, not daily 
like uh, most Roman Catholic priests do, not weekly or monthly like some Catholics or Protestants do. It is of interest to note that Epiphanes recognized that Jesus had to be slain on the 14th of the month. It is sad that he and others did not believe they needed to observe it when and how Jesus taught. Strangely, he wrote this about the practices of the Greco-Roman Church, which we now call Roman and Orthodox Catholics, but he calls God's Holy Church. Because here is that quote from his book, page 25. But God's Holy Church does not miss the truth in any way in her fixing the date of this mystery. She uses not only the 14th day, but also the seven days which recur order of the seven days of the week. And she uses not only the 14th day of the lunar month, but the course of the sun as well, to keep us from observing two Passovers in one year and not even one in another. We observe the 14th day then, but we wait until after the equinox and bring the end of our full observance to the sacred Lord's day. Well, dear friends, the Greco-Roman Catholics and Protestants most certainly do not observe Passover on the evening of the 14th, unless that happens to fall when some observe an evening mass, the equinox argument, uh, argument is not scriptural. And since the Lord's Supper, so-called Lord's Supper, is observed frequently, most practicing Greco-Roman Catholics and Protestants do observe it more than once a year. The 4th, 5th century historian Epiphanes even admits that the church used to observe the 14th when he wrote, quote, audience, they choose to celebrate the Passover with the Jews, that is, they contentiously celebrate the Passover at the same time as the Jews are holding their festival of unleavened bread. And indeed, that this used to be the church's custom. End of the quote. Anyway, since Constantine's declarations did not stop everyone from properly observing Passover, a later Roman emperor, after he became a baptized Christian, decreed the death penalty. This is Edicts of Theodosius against the Heretics, A.D. 380 and 394. I decree that by the death of the offender and the same capital punishment was inflicted on the audience or quattro decimus who should dare to perpetrate the atrocious crime of celebrating on an improper day the festival. This is quoted in the book Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbons, Volume 3, Chapter 27. And this was written about 1776 and 1788. Uh, from this very uh, emperor, we can read that the various enactments against heretics are contained in the Code of Theodosius. And he lists various names of those heretics. And to the reign of Theodosius belong the glory, says Edward Gibbon, the glory or the infamy of establishing inquisi inquisitors of faith who seem to have been specially enjoined to look after the crime of the Quattro Decimus. Now, this was uh, given to us in the Smith, Smith Dictionary of Greek and, Greek and Roman Biography and Mythology. It was published in 2008. This is page 1064. So, is killing those that follow the example of Jesus and John to observe the Passover on the 14th instead of Sunday a sign of a true Christian leader or a sign of a supporter of Antichrist? Well, notice that the office of the Inquisitors was actually first formed to deal with people who kept Passover on the original biblical date. Did you know that the date of Passover was considered to be that important? Well, Greg Williams wrote of the bond of peace, but those who endorsed a Sunday Passover, which he and others often call Easter, became murderers. The Roman Catholic and Orthodox Saint John Chrysostom preached in 387 AD. He preached against those supposed heretics who, you know, who keep, keep the feast of the Passover and the laws. And you will not be able to keep the Passover in any of the cities which the Lord your God gives you, that he said. And uh, you can find his uh, railing is against the Christians keeping the Passover, uh, keeping the Passover in Antioch, where he served as a, as a bishop. So, uh, we are, have not changed. The reality is that Grace Communion uh, International is focused on being and appearing to be Protestant to the world. They want unity with the world. And uh, this is certainly not Christian unity based on the Bible. Uh, my name is Alexander Sashavelli. This is uh, Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye, friends.